random violent class order family genus. Hello to students. Just putting the finishing touches on a bird feeder my daughter made. More about that later. Today we're going to look at some of the mammal animals that are in my backyard. Specifically the eastern gray squirrel and the eastern chipmunk. But first, while we're out here, remember my friend the snail? Still living all this time, five months after we put it in there and sealed it airtight. Let's take a closer look. Classification. On one hand we have the chipmunk, on the other the eastern gray squirrel. Let's start at the top. The kingdom. Both are clearly animal, animal kingdom. Phylum. They have a backbone, a spine, so that makes them a vertebrate. Kingdom, phylum. Class. Class, they are mammals. They have hair, they feed their young milk, they're warm-blooded. Order. They are rodents. They have rodent teeth. <laughs> family, Sciuridae. So that's the squirrel family. And then they are in two different uh, genuses or genera, we call it. The squirrel is Cyrus, and the chipmunk is Tamius. The eastern gray squirrel is Cyrus carolinensis, and the scientific name of the chipmunk is Tamius striatus. So both the chipmunk and the gray squirrel occupy what we call the same ecological niche. They do relatively the same job in the environment. They're both seed eaters uh, and they both bury their seeds uh, and store them, which sometimes means that those seeds will come up as young trees. So they do plant things. The squirrel, however, however, is more of a predator. It can be a dangerous predator to nesting birds. It'll eat the young and eggs of uh, many songbirds. They divide the environment vertically. Gray squirrels, you'll see, tend to stay more in the trees and in the treetops. All squirrels will make nests up in trees, uh, and they're called leaf nests. You probably have seen many of these in your neighborhood. And they're well made and constructed, and you can see in the diagram that it's quite snug and cozy inside. The chipmunk will stay on the ground. It can go up in trees, but will stay on the ground. And if it needs to hide, it would prefer to hide under a wood pile, for example, like the one behind me, or in its den, which is underground. Chipmunks hibernate in the winter time. Normally their heart rate is 350 beats a minute. In the winter time, when it's hibernating, its heartbeat will go down to about 40 beats per minute. So, one of the chipmunks' entryways is here has a nice little tunnel going down to where its den would be underneath the sidewalk, well protected and very dry. And then its other entrance or exit is over here, well hidden in these bushes. The color of the gray squirrel is perfectly matched to the bark of the trees. Now gray squirrels will have two different color variations that you'll sometimes see. Black and then albino. These are both recessive traits. This year, I have an albino uh, gray squirrel in my backyard and it's been fun watching it. Is its color going to be an advantage or disadvantage? Well, because gray is perfectly matched to the bark, probably it's gonna be a disadvantage. They are active in the winter, but they don't spend a lot of time down on the ground and on the snow. So against the gray bark, as you can see, white really stands out, and it is much more likely to be picked off by a predator, such as an owl or a hawk. The gray squirrel's aggressiveness, agility, curiosity, and intelligence are great advantages. However, they can make them pretty annoying to be in your backyard or at your bird feeder. 
So it's a constant battle. Who's smarter, humans or squirrels? Hi everyone, I am Leah and I am Mr. Rafferty's daughter. I am a teacher in Milwaukee and I really wanted to get into one of my dad's crazy videos. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a homemade bird feeder with things you can find at your house. Is to gather all of your supplies. So what you're going to need is a carton of milk. Make sure you clean it well. You're also going to want to get some colorful paper or some wrapping paper to decorate it. You're going to want to have either tape or glue. You're going to want some sort of string. The only thing I could find was shoelaces, so that's going to have to work for me. You're going to need some scissors, a pen or a marker, and some sort of like stick, straw, chopstick, anything like that. Next, what you're going to be doing is drawing a square. This is going to be where the birds are going to be getting the bird food, so you're going in the bird seed, so you're going to want to make it pretty big. Once you have this square drawn on, on the front and the back side, you're going to want to cut those squares out. You can also make these circular if you'd like, by using like a jar or something to help you make that circle. Um, this part might be a little difficult and you might need some of your parents' help to do this, just because it can be a little tricky with the scissors. All right, so I have both of my holes cut out on either side. Something that you might wanna consider is adding some more space at the bottom, so maybe cutting it like up to here instead, just because then you won't have to replace the um, bird seed as often. Next thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna decorate it. So I'm gonna be using these Spring Colors construction paper, but you can use wrapping paper, you can use stickers, you can use paint, you can do anything you like just to make this a little prettier. All right, here is my decorated birdhouse. I just used some paper to cover up each side and I used some nice bright spring colors. I also made a little roof with the paper as well so it looks more like a house. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is punch a hole in the top of the carton. This is a pretty difficult because it's so thick. Next, I'm going to be poking a hole from the bottom here on each side. I'm going to be sticking my straw through so that the birds are gonna be able to sit on the outside of the straws. The last step is just to stick through whatever you put there. Could be a stick, could be a straw, could be a chopstick. I actually poke the hole with a hole puncher, but you could also use scissors. And then you have your homemade bird feeder with things you can find at your house. Now the thing I love about this bird feeder, other than the fact that my daughter made it, is that a milk carton is naturally resistant to rain. It's a wax covered cardboard. Um, now, this one was designed to go under the eave of a house where it was well protected, but if you were going to just have it and leave it out uh, in the rain and all weather, you probably wouldn't want to have construction paper on it. Maybe you'd spray paint it instead. So there's a couple of things as an engineer, because you guys had sixth grade science and you did a lot of engineering in that, uh, is you want to kind of look for ways of improving a prototype like this. And what I decided based on some knowledge of bird feeders, is that we should have some holes in the bottom. And that is so water that does get in during the rain is able to drain out. The uh, seed doesn't get fungus and start to uh, mildew and get unsafe for birds to eat. As Leah suggested, a chopstick might make a good perch. I think that the straw might be a little bit too flimsy. Um, probably support the weight of most birds. This side, though, looks a little flimsy. So I'm going to use the straw and a chopstick to go through it. Okay, so it's a pretty little feeder and I'm using a skinny clothesline, hoping that squirrels won't be able to get a good grip on that. Uh, they could slide down that I suppose, but we'll see in the 
never-ending fight between man and squirrel. We'll see who wins. <laughs>